Well, I was asked to go and be the, the official Australian war artist, and it's fun, funny how the concept of it is very foreign, and it's something that I would never have considered, but I couldn't possibly say no to it. Being an artist for me, it's all about experience, and that experience then feeds into the studio practice, and, and I couldn't have envisaged a more extreme experience than going into Afghanistan or into any war zone. When I got to Afghanistan, I was very aware that I, I, that I didn't want to be in anyone's way, that I wanted to, to sort of slot quietly into the background and, and um, observe what was happening simply because I had no idea what was going to happen and I thought I've got to get in there and be quiet and listen and watch and, mm -hmm. and collect information but very quickly I, I became engaged with the guys and girls I wanted to know what they were feeling um, how they were surviving emotionally and physically you know really the basics of humanity life and death and right there in your face the biggest themes that an artist could ever imagine right there and it became pretty obvious that the best way for me to do that would be to get them to sit for me and to make work about them as they tell their story to me of these incredible experiences. The experience of getting these guys to sit, sit for me naked was cathartic in a way for me and for them because for them, it was a way of talking about their experiences. I asked them a lot of questions during the sitting about you know, the smell and the sound and the heat and the dust and the cold and the emotion. And, and all of them, in some senses, I think, felt that I made portraits of them the way they felt rather than the way they looked or heroic portraits of soldiers. It was about the emotion of being there. Uh, and it is a very emotional place to be. The spikes of, um, of testosterone and adrenaline and, and fear and sadness and mateship and friendship and everything that sort of all of the human condition in an extreme version. Air Commodore John Oddie stood up and said, I, I, it's very confronting, you've made me look exactly the way I feel. And for me, that, that's a successful painting. I have always been interested in humans. So I, I wasn't as interested in the machinery of war or the actual physical battle, because I also couldn't get to that point. There's no front line, there's no front line in Afghanistan. You sort of have to tread around the landmines and IEDs and, and live with the troops and sort of experience the pressure that they're under every day, every minute um, and this constant threat and, and, and I sort of naturally became interested in how, you, how, how they cope with that threat and how they cope with that pressure and they're very young, often very young people doing something extraordinary um, so I was instantly drawn to that um, and to tell that story involved them coming to me after Afghanistan and in Afghanistan and making work about them. PTSD became one part of the show because that's what's happened in every single war zone that Australia's been involved in. It's one part of, of that war. But in, through post-traumatic stress disorder, there's also hope. You know, these guys are learning with each other how to cope, how to survive it, how to beat PTSD, and how to move forward. Um, and how to, in a way, warn their young friends who are going to follow in their footsteps in Afghanistan about the pitfalls and dangers and how to cope. So that was one other part of, of the show that um, was inevitable when you look closely at the young people who are, who are there, young and old people who are in Afghanistan on our behalf. In, inside Kandahar, the first night we were there when I was rocketed three times, it's one of those dark, dark feelings that, you, that overwhelmed me in my bunk that night. I thought, what am I doing here? I don't want to be here. 
it's the noisiest, noisiest place I've ever been. It's thundering, thundering noise of massive diesel generators and aeroplanes landing and cars and sirens all night um, on the 24 hour rotation of, of aircraft hovering above Afghanistan to pull in to supply air support whenever it's needed. So it means it's just a constant drone in that city, in that town. And then rockets come in from the outside. It's surreal. This the biggest build up of military might anywhere in the world at one point right in that spot and they're still causing havoc by firing rockets over the fence from a kilometre out and causing absolute chaos. I know I had complete breakdown in my mind that night and then woke up and the next morning and really thought these people here now have a story to tell. These people here are dealing with this. All the young guys that I'd spent that night with were there for eight months. They'd done three months they all laugh off the threat of rockets. There's this constant saying that you're more likely to be hit by a Sydney bus than by a rocket in Kandahar, which is crap, absolute crap. But I completely got it. I understood the humour. The humour is there so that they can move forward, do their jobs day after day after day for eight months at a time. Um, and it's pretty powerful thing to start considering when I was there how I would then make work about their experience. Being in Afghanistan one of the things that hit me that was sort of the most um, really emotional sort of a feeling was to feel a part of these young people's lives and and that I suddenly had thousands of young Australians who are heavily armed who really seriously made me feel like they were there to protect me. And half of them were half my age, and they were seriously engaged in caring for me. And that's an overwhelming feeling. Um, and then to come back and feel like I have told part of their story, I know that they, they'll, a lot of them will do anything for me for the rest of my life, which is mind-blowing. Um, I, I, humbling and um, uh, there's not much I can say about it it's just uh, an incredible feeling to be a part of their lives if you walk into this exhibition I hope that you'll get more of a sense of what it is like to be in Afghanistan to more than just what it looks like but what it feels like what it smells like and what it is like to survive an experience like that.